So another 5 a.m. session this morning before work. Uh, I've come in, did some leg extensions, some squats. That's basically the, the whole session I, I can, I've got time for. Uh, so one hour long session. Um, basically, I did a whole bunch of like 30 minutes worth of leg extensions, working up to a 30 kilo uh, leg extension. And then I moved to the, to the squats where I was able to hit a training max of 190. Um, this is the first day where my rectors are not like painful. Uh, doms are finally washed away. So that means it's taken three freaking days for me to recover from one rep at 90% or at close to 100%. That 240 kilo deadlift that I did the other day, my PR um, has taxed me so damn much that it's taken me three days of like subpar squatting. I think I hit 120, 120 and 150 on those days. So like six, around 60% of my one rep max. Um, the, 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 the fact that one rep can do that to me, I find remarkable. The deadlift is a beast. As I was saying to you guys in the comments and you guys are saying the same thing to me, there are some lifts that we just get absolutely taxed by. Um, in my instance, I think it was both a combination of the central nervous system getting fried from that maximum effort um, and also doms, man. <laughs> I just I keep thinking to myself about hypertrophy, about some, some of these rules of hypertrophy. Um, can one rep really cause that much hypertrophy? Like one freaking rep. <laughs> um, for the longest time, I've been told that you can't build muscle just doing one rep. You know, you need volume. You need to go beyond five, closer to 10. That's kind of your bodybuilding kind of realm. Man, I just did one freaking rep. So yes, uh, three days ago when I did the 240, my deadlift session looked like one rep with 60, one rep 100, one rep 140, then 180, then 220, then 240. That's all I did for the deadlift. Before that, I went worked up to a 180 squat. Um, and then after the deadlift, so I did squat, deadlift, and after the deadlift, I did... Uh, the Bulgarian split squats. Now, those other two exercises never text my lum my lumbar and my thoracic freaking erectors ever. So I can say that the majority of the, the, the doms that I got from that session um, come from uh, the deadlift. Uh, it just got me thinking last three days while I was kind of squatting subpar and basically wasting sessions, I kept thinking to myself, you know, what is the frequency of the deadlift? Um, clearly I'm feeling better and better uh, you know when it comes to the deadlift because of these leg extensions I feel like finally I found something that takes me off the ground um, for me previously you know the deadlift is all just a hip extension exercise just a big fat pull um, and those first like five centimeters is just impossible to get the bar moving if you're just thinking about pulling the bar up um, if you have your quads on the map on your brain and you can sort of push off the floor, kind of leg press that thing for the first kind of quarter of that movement. And then you got some momentum and then you kick in your hip extensors, your glutes, your lower back, your thoracic back, your hamstrings. Then it just becomes so much easier. Um, so I feel like I found something when it comes to the deadlift. The deadlift is now on the move, which is really exciting for me. So if I do this exercise that you're seeing, you know, just doing a whole bunch of, like basically 30 minutes of, leg extensions, worked up to 30 kilos for five sets of 30. Just a whole lot of volume and just pumping the glutes, uh, pumping the, the quads. Um, I feel like, you know, it carries over directly to my deadlift. I have a, I have a stronger start. Um, I've always felt, you know, for the last year or two, I've always felt like, you know, I can block pull a lot more. You know, I can pull, block pull a lot more weight than I can deadlift meaning that my top end of my deadlift is really strong. I've got these big ass glutes and I feel like I've got strong hamstrings now, it seems, because my hip extension is really good. Um, maybe that's that's as a result of all this ATG squatting and you know, kind of going into the hole and trying to kind of dig yourself out of the hole with 180 or 200 kilos on your back. Maybe that's kind of the result of that. Um, but I just don't have the explosiveness of the floor with the deadlift. This exercise has basically proved that you know, the moment I do this, the moment I get my quads pumped, I just feel so much more damn stronger with, with the deadlift. Um, so I want to keep doing that. Um, I dare say I want to do it twice a week now with these kind of like training max lifts. Um, but but at the same token, I'm thinking to myself, man, this is a squat everyday program. I'm a squat guy. 
Um, what does that mean for my squatting? Because clearly, three days ago I did the deadlift, and the, the following three days have just been shit when it comes to squatting. Uh, I just my rectors are so fried that I just don't have the the you know the capability to put in solid squat sessions. My squat volume has been very very low, very very low. You know, my whole sub fifty program idea has not really come to uh, to the table at all because I'm just so fried from doing all these leg extensions. Um, and the, uh, you know, training max squats. So it's almost like this weakness that I have with the quads is best served with the leg extensions. Um, and if, you know, and that's kind of the recipe for both for the deadlift and the squat, it seems, because it's a glaring weakness of mine. Um, and uh, I just feel right, right now it's either high rep leg extensions or is it high rep squats. Uh, with high rep squats, it seems like I don't tax my quads as much and as better as I do with leg extensions. So it, it, it just it makes sense for me to just do leg extensions because that hits the, the, the muscle exactly that's weak on me. Um, I've, I know that my adductors are really strong. I know my glutes are really strong. Um, and that's where the squat hits for me mostly. So if I just you know keep my skill up high with the squat every day, training max, and let all the volume kind of being handled by the leg extensions, um, it seems like that's the kind of recipe for, for success for me. Um, my deadlift started moving basically in the space of a week of introducing the leg extensions. I just feel like walking around, I feel like I can deadlift 250. You know what I mean? Like that. I just feel it because my quads are in the in the mix and my brain is just telling me, giving me this confidence that I can pull a lot of weight off the ground because finally I have something that I can freaking use to get the thing off the ground, man. Um, and because my arms are so freaking short, you know, definitely shorter than my wingspan, um, you know, <laughs> that means I have to lean over a whole bunch, man. So... If you've got short arms and you've got shit quads, you can't get the freaking deadlift off the ground, man. You just can't get it to the portion where you're strong out, which is the lockout for me. So, you know, if you got these long ass hand, uh, arms and you got weak quads, maybe you can start with a kind of really, really kind of vertical position. You can kind of have your quads in a better kind of mechanical advantage. But if you don't have strong quads and you don't have long arms, you're, you're screwed. So if you do not have... If you're not built for deadlifting, you have to get yourself some sick ass quads, man. That seems to be the thing for me. You need to develop the quads that can kind of turn on even at a shitty angle, a uh, shitty starting position, just to give you that little kind of bounce off the, off the bottom so you can then catch it around the knee and you can kind of lock it out. So that's where I'm, that's where I'm at right now. Um, uh, I'm not happy with the amount of squat volume I'm doing. Last three days, like I said, I mean, that's... It's not enough. I feel like I want to do more. Um, but as always, I always think like, it just seems to me that it's either one or the other. Either you're moving the squat or the deadlift. Um, maybe my deadlift can, be, can, can pull my squat up with it. If I just keep developing these, um, you know, one rep maxes with the deadlift, maybe it's, it's, that's how my body wants it. Um, I don't know. It, it's a lot going through my head right now. Um, you know, it seems, as, it seems as though that my squat is not my main priority right now. Um, but I have to take the, the, the weakness. It's simple as that. Um, the squat and the deadlift are really close cousins. So if you get one moving, the other one's going to move as well, especially kind of the way I'm built. Um, so in the order of, of importance, you know, in terms of me moving forward, leg extension is number one. Honestly, that's the number one thing that I need to address because clearly the quads are shit. Um, and even one week of just focusing on leg extensions, I was able to hit the PR with the deadlift. Um, so it's, this whole thing, man, uh, training, working out what you need is, is difficult. Um, who would have thought that this squat every guy, you know, has weak quads, um, but it's not weak quads, like according to what the, the, the general population, it's weak quads relative to all the other stuff that I have on me. Um, instead of maybe, maybe instead of saying weak quads, I can say, strong glutes and adductors, right? Maybe you can say that. Maybe that's kind of a better example of what's happening here. You know, all this squatting every day has kind of predisposed me to develop um, stronger muscles on one side and not so much on the other side. Um, so the intelligent lifter needs to kind of work that out. Okay, how much salt do I need to add to this dish? You know, how much sugar do I need to add to, uh, add to this dish? You know, what are the spices that I need? You know, um, no matter how much you, you, you love salt, if you keep pouring the damn salt in, you're gonna ruin the dish, right? You all need to kind of come together nicely. You need to kind of work out what you need. 
So that's kind of the same thing here. Even though I damn love squatting, I could squat day and night. I could squat middle of the night, wake up, freaking set my alarm at 3 a.m., wake up, run up to a freaking training max and go back to bed. I could do that. I love that. But that's not what I need right now. I need to, you know, kind of step back and be like, okay, I need less salt. <laughs> so that's kind of where I'm at right now. Um, that's, I think that's the, the, the path forward. Um, attack the damn quads. Um, and part of that is also um, the Bulgarian split squats. I feel like that does a great job in, in hitting the quads and also kind of that weak portion of my hip. So that's another movement. But once again, what is the frequency of that lift? <laughs> when, I've, when I have Friday rectors like last three days, I haven't been able to do the Bulgarian split squats. So maybe the days that I do the deadlift is the days I do the Bulgarian split squats. So that's twice a week. It's still okay, but I thought I could do more. But anyway, that's where I'm at right now. I'm going to jump back in the house, get ready and go to work. And I'll catch you guys tomorrow for another workout. Peace out.